Howdy folks, welcome back to EM378SI Online. Um, I trust that online classes have been treating you well so far. Um, we're going to get into this problem here. Um, I think this will be the only one that we do today. So just this one video and you should be good to go. Um, yeah, I drew this little poorly drawn duck here. Um, try and lighten the mood. So that's as far as my drawing skills go. All right. Let's get into it. So we have a flow rate Q uh, of gas from a smokestack is a function of the density of the ambient air, density of the gas, gravity, and then stack height and diameter. And we're using these uh, three variables as our repeating variables to develop a set of pi terms that can be used to describe this problem. All right, so if you remember last video, we're going to write out our variables as functions of one variable, just so we are clear on what all is involved in this relationship here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna write out the variables that we have and their respective dimensions. So there's your variables. And below, we're going to write their dimensions. Now, this problem doesn't necessarily say whether or not we're supposed to use F, L, or T, or M, L, and T. So what we're going to do is think about which one would be easiest for us. Um, we notice that density, that's always given in something like kilograms per meters cubed or pounds per foot cubed, something like that. So that lends itself pretty easily to mass per length instead of using a force. So we're going to use MLT, or the SI dimensions here. All right, so flow rate, that's going to be a length cubed, right, because that's volume per time. Density, like we set up here, that is going to be a mass per length cubed for volume. Same as the mass over here. Gravity, again, is an acceleration, so that's length per time squared. And then two lengths, the h and the diameter. So far, so good. So we have, next we have to find out how many pi terms that we need. And we do that by finding, we take the number of variables, which is six. So that includes one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, a common mistake is to say there's one, two, three, four, five variables, but we don't want to forget this one here on the left-hand side. So just count from this chart or make sure you count everything up here, not this function notation though. One, two, three, four, five, six variables. And the number of dimensions we're working with is just three, mass, length, and time, right? Those are the only three that are represented. So six minus three, three pi terms. And the repeating variables that we're told to use are rho a, the diameter, and gravity. Got that right there. All right. So starting with pi 1, we will start with q as the variable that we're working with. And we have density of the air, gravity and diameter C, and that has to be dimensionless. Again, don't forget your little dot above your equal sign. All right, so putting all of these into the variables that we have, or putting all of our variables into the dimensions that we have up here, length cubed per time, multiplied by mass length to the negative third, a multiplied by length t to the minus 2b and then length to the c and that has to be equal to m to the 0 l to the 0 t to the 0. Then we're going to set up our um, system of equations starting with the variable l. We know that there is 3 here negative 3a 1b and then 1c. That has to be equal to 0, or 0. 
for mass, the only one that we have is A. So right off the bat, we know A is zero. And then for time, let's see, we have negative one here because it's in the denominator, and then minus two B is zero. So what follows is A is zero, B is negative one half, and C is five halves. So we have our first pi term, which is Q over g d to the fifth square root. All right, that's this just the same as, um, let's see, one sec. Um, Q times, one sec, I got lost here. Lost in my notes. Q times g to the negative one half, d to the negative five over halves. There we go. All right, figure it out. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to solve for pi 2. Now, if you want to be a noob about it, you can do this whole process again. Or if you want to be a real guy, you can notice that a couple of our repeating variables have twins, right? So row A and row G, those have the same dimensions. H and height and diameter also have the same dimensions. So we can say pi 2 and pi 3 can be found by inspection. And that's going to make our life a lot easier, right? We can just say pi 2 is going to be the ratio of our densities. And pi 3 is going to be the ratio of these two lengths here. So there we go. We have our three pi terms. Um, again, I want to reiterate, we can say pi 2 and pi 3 are found by inspection because they, are, they have twin dimensions between a repeating variable and a non-repeating variable, right? So if you want to prove this to yourself, you can do this whole process over again, but you'll just get these two um, pi terms there that we already got just by inspection. So that can save you a lot of time. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. All right, the final way that we will write this out is we'll say final notation is that pi 1 is a function of pi 2 pi 3. So we have our pi 1 up here. We'll use this one though because that looks a little bit cleaner. q over square root of g d to the fifth is a function of our other two pi terms that we found by inspection. Rho a over rho g. Make that look a little bit more like a g. Comma h over d. And that is your answer there. That is your suitable set of pi terms. Um, now, just to close out this uh, video, what we'll be doing going forward, so this is not part of the problem. Um, in tomorrow, you'll see more of this stuff in lecture. And then as, as we get further into the week and further into this chapter, we're going to start doing modeling which is the basic idea of what we want to get to using these pi terms is to be able to relate a prototype to a model that we're using on a smaller scale. Um, this makes it a lot easier instead of working with a bunch of calculations and lab experiments that don't quite work or are really complicated to accomplish with um, either just raw calculations or um, using making an actual model. We can set up a prototype at a smaller scale, which will be our model, and that'll make our lives a lot easier. And we can use pi terms to find certain values um, that we can use in the laboratory. Um, so that'll what, that's what we're going to see Friday. And then also probably going into next week. Um, I haven't taken the time to look at the syllabus yet. But stay tuned for modeling. Um, I will post videos for that Thursday. And then you'll see that in lecture um, Friday. Or maybe I'll do 
Nah, I'll probably yeah, I'm gonna do this. No, oh, yeah, I'll do model I'll do model videos Thursday. That'll be my plan. And I'll give you a brief introduction to what you'll see in lecture Friday, and I'll be good. Again, um, if these videos are helpful, um, let me know. Right, uh, feedback is always helpful. Um, and also, you can also comment on these videos if these are helpful, if they're not helpful, suggestions, um, and other questions you can have. And don't forget WebEx, right? We have Mondays at 6, Tuesdays at 6, and then Thursdays at 5, Iowa time. So I'll see you in the WebEx meetings. Come with any questions you have. Again, um, yeah, um, thanks for hanging with us in this transition time. Um, I'm feeling good about this. All right, I will see you guys tonight in the WebEx meeting.